Hey, housewives, come on in. You know the dirty dishes are still in the sink from yesterday and the laundry is still in the basket. Pop your AirPods in and make yourself at home here. I'm Tracy. I'm Tori. And And we we are your Unlikely Housewives. Stepping out in faith and believing that God calls the unlikely, we are here to show you the appreciation and validation you deserve, lead you to authentic relationships, and release you of believing the cultural lies to restore your faith and wellness. Pull up those high-waisted yoga pants, tighten your top knot, and reheat your coffee for the third time. Turn up the volume and let's go. Hey, housewives, welcome back. Hey, hey. We are here for another Tuesday and another exciting episode. And we have not one, not two, but four guests with us today. We are so excited to have such a fun group. And I'm going to let Tori introduce our school board candidates. Hey, so last election time period, Tracy and I started to get more involved in the school board because, well, mamas and daddies, you needed to, right? We all needed to with some of those things that were up on the table. And so come this election, I was more on our game. I was like, who are these people running? And well, I want to make sure I am supporting those who are in the right fight. So that led us to finding these four candidates, the Blue Valley Excellence Slate. And so we're going to introduce them and we're going to do this one at a time and we're going to try not to confuse you housewives with all the voices at the time. So we're going to start with you, Rachel. Please introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Thank you for listening. My name is Rachel Faagutu. You'll see my name out there. It's a different name. I'm hoping it's going to work for me when people are looking at the ballot like this looks unique. Yeah. (laughs) Faagutu, F-A-A-G-U-T-U. I am a, I'm married to a Samoan, so that's where the name comes from. Okay. He's a American Samoan. We met in Hawaii. That's where I'm from. And uh, we have five children. So my oldest is 19. She's a Blue Valley grad. And then I've got a senior at Blue Valley, a sophomore at Blue Valley, and I've got a seventh grader and a second grader. So that's awesome. That's me. Awesome. Yeah. Welcome, Welcome, Rachel. Thanks for having me. All right. Next. How about you, Trisha? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Thank you uh, for listening. I'm Trisha Hamilton. I am married to my best friend. We just celebrated 24 years. Congratulations. Love him dearly. He is on the campaign stump with me, if you want to call it a campaign stump. He Mm -hmm. helps me navigate because I am terrible with directions. So he is my big helper. We have three kids. Our son graduated in 2020 from Blue Valley Northwest. He is currently a senior at K-State. We have a senior right now at Blue Valley Northwest, and then we have a seventh grader as well. Very nice. Thank you and welcome. All right. How about you, Christine? Okay. Hello. I'm Christine Vasquez. I am a mama of five, married to my best friend for 21 years. It's a good thing that you guys don't have the same best friend. (laughs) That would be a really good thing. That would be awkward. Okay. Although I met mine in high school when I was 16 and that was California. So probably unlikely. So I also have a 22 grad from Blue Valley. I have a senior this year. I have an eighth grader. I have a fifth grader and I have a kindergartner. So if you've heard me before, I say you'll find me in high school until 2036. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. No wonder you're fighting. (laughs) Yes. And last but not least, Mike. Sorry. Yeah, I'm Mike Kibner. I am also married to my best friend who... uh, Rachel, you clearly didn't say your best friend. (laughs) Yeah, Rachel's two guys she tolerates. (laughs) It's fine. No. (laughs) Uh, we we actually just celebrated our 17th an- anniversary on Saturday. So oh, my 18th was on Sunday. <laughs> yes, awesome. Yay for marriage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and we have three daughters. So I'm used to this estrogen filled environment. Uh, we have a 14 year old, an 11 year old, and a six year old who is uh, quite the little feisty ones. So. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, thank you guys for coming. You guys are busy, busy, busy. And on the campaign trail, like Trisha said, this is all you're doing, right? You guys don't have day jobs or anything, right? No. So tell us what you guys do. What's your day job? What do you do for a living? Mm-hmm. Well, mine is 
my husband and I decided to let me stay home as a housewife. So it's interesting. That's a, yes. <laughs> yes. that's a day job. Oh, yeah. That's a day job. That's yeah. a 24 7 job. Yes. yes, it absolutely is. <laughs> yeah. And so on my off hours, my husband and I own a business and I'm a songwriter. I'm a singer oh, and I'm a musician. While I don't travel as much as we used to because the kids need more time at home. So, yeah, I'm mostly at home and I sing and I, and my kids and I've recorded a few albums and but right now I'm with the kids and I'm running for the board. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. How about you, Trisha? Well, I used to be a housewife, if you, yes. you want to call it that. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when my seventh grader entered kindergarten, our situation changed at home and I needed to re-enter the workforce. So I started looking and started praying, where would that be? Where would the Lord lead me? So I happen to have the privilege of working at my church. And so I'm so thankful for that. For six years, I have been the director of business administration for my church. I help our ministry leaders be fiscally responsible (laughs) with the money that the Lord entrusts to our church. I run the daily operations of our business office and our team including our HR functions. So payroll, you name it, all of that fun stuff. And I am so blessed to serve alongside of some incredible people that love our country, that love our community, that love our people. And I get to be a part of that. I get to say, I get to go to work. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's huge. All right, Christine, you are up. I am up. So... I used to be a housewife. I used to be a stay-at-home mom. I've been kind of in and out of about seven businesses uh, that we've started for the last 10 years. I just dipped my toe in when we maybe felt like we had a little extra time. But I'm blessed now to actually be able to do what I love, which is I have a small renovation and design business that I do. So my youngest off to kindergarten, it kind of felt like the right time to kick it into full swing. So that's what I do in my day job. I was already on two job sites this morning, and now I'm here at the podcast. So super excited. Awesome. Well, thank you, Christine. And what about you, Mike? What do you do? So my wife and I are what many refer to as nerds. We're both <laughs> CPAs, so I work for a local corporation. I oversee a technical accounting and reporting, which is as awesome as it sounds. Yeah, that's um, and, riveting, uh, riveting. Yeah, yes, I can feel everyone really excited. So Basically, on my day-to-day, I, I do that as well as chauffeur kids to practices when we're not doing this campaigning stuff. So. Yeah. I feel like we're Uber interns, right? So we're not really getting <laughs> yes. paid for our, taking them all the places, but they're great backseat drivers, let me tell you. <laughs> Mike, I want to know, who does the home finances? If you're both CPAs, (laughs) that's that's, I'm just curious. Absolutely, Leela. So I am the theoretical guy, which you guys will find. (laughs) I've had many economic arguments with the ladies here, mostly to myself with them involved. Um, (laughs) And so I I live much more in that, whereas Leela is much more the detail person and handles the finances and tells me not to spend things on things that I may want to spend money on. So that's okay, good. I good. I like that. Okay, well, I want to switch gears a little bit to get to how we got here. So we're going to go backwards and I'm going to just start with you, Mike. Did you ever see yourself getting into politics or running for an elected position? No. Uh, <laughs> so like I said, I listened to actually a lot of podcasts and it seemed that any podcast that was remotely political emphasized that Right now, we are at a bad place in our country, in our local communities, and you need to start thinking about running locally. And my wife and I just kind of got frustrated, as you'll probably see similar stories with these guys, with the current state of our public schools in Blue Valley, which is why almost everybody moved to Blue Valley. Absolutely. And I just said, well, we can keep complaining about it, which we do, (laughs) but we can also do something about it. So... I absolutely never saw our, my wife and I never discussed it prior to probably three months ago. It had never been even. Really? Oh. So like wow. just three months, mu- y'all, that's so, like 90 days. <laughs> so basically. <laughs> A lot can change yeah, in so 90 basically, days. Basically like May, the beginning of May was when I just said, we've got to do something. And it, it sounds really minor. And I've, the girls have heard me say this before, but we have a busing issue. 
and the insanity with how it's handled and how ridiculous there were, weren't solutions thought through just made me think we have to do something and along with all this other rot that we yeah. can go into later just made us decide we have to do something about it because and and I say we and I think all of us agree with we as far as our families because it's a big commitment and so our family had to decide to run and we're the front of it, that but our families are running with us. Well, I, what I heard is the consistent message that we're trying to share with our unlikely housewives is that it's that repetition of hearing something of like being called to action. Like you were listening to podcasts, you were seeing what was going on. And it was almost that frustration and that stirring that led you to action. And that's really what we're trying to do with our community and our local housewives of saying, hey, and even not even just the local ones, everybody else that's listening and hearing what's going on in the schools. It's like, OK, what are we doing to step out? and share the message and step up. Yeah, and, and it, I think all of us agree, like we all had to sit back and spend some time praying about it, right? Absolutely. Because this thought gets put in your head and you're like, is that just a random thought or is that something that we're really being led to? And I think all of us came to the same conclusion. We, none of us knew each other, well, two of, uh, two of us knew each other, but we didn't really know each other before this. And we all separately kind of did the same thing, right? Where wow. we, we were all felt convicted to do this. And then all sat back and prayed with our, our spouses and our families and then chose to move and do this was our plan of action. Yeah. Right? Okay, I wanna I wanna lead to Christine because I remember about two years ago, I reached out to you and a couple of friends and I'm like, Can we just meet for coffee? Can we just sit in a space and like talk about what's going on and and pray over each other? Like being yeah. public school mamas and being Christian women and just feeling so alone. And you were absolutely one of the ones that, I mean, we didn't talk about stepping into. Right. <laughs> you not, that was not even on your radar. No. But obviously, God, bringing women together and praying together is what got you here. So did you yeah. see yourself? Yeah. Running? So <laughs> I want to just tag on real quick as a as a yes and amen to your listeners to what Mike said. So Rachel and I didn't know each other previously, but the rest of us didn't. And just as an encouragement, if the Lord is putting something in your heart to do, you just don't even know where he's going to meet you. So the fact that we said yes individually, and then we sit here today as a slate and a team because the Lord was stirring something in our hearts, it actually makes me super excited for what's going to happen in the schools because the Lord's up to something. Yeah. But just as an encouragement to your listeners, like you never know what's on the other side of your yes. I kind of thought I was doing it alone and look at now I've got backup. It's amazing. Yeah. So <laughs> just as an encouragement. No, I was going to say, so when did the Lord start stirring your heart and going, all right, Christine, get prepare yourself for this? Yeah. Well, I would say to Tracy's point, I feel like the last six or seven years, I mean, when you have five kids and I've been mostly able to stay at home, you just can't help but be aware of what's going on in the schools. So super interested and active in going to school board meetings, if there was something, we previously lived in California, if there was something in the curriculum there, like you found me with like a six month old baby at a school board meeting, going to listen, going to speak, going to hear people, because I wanted to be involved and aware. We have a great community that does that a lot with things like room parent and things like that. And I think that's super important in some of the first steps. But what it did is just open my eyes more and more to what was going on in the schools. and. I think, of course, like a lot of people, when COVID hit, I did not realize how much control these small local positions had in my life. So not only yeah. were they perpetrating certain ideologies that I don't agree with and taking some of the rigor out of classrooms, but now all of a sudden the well-being of my child and them even being able to go to school or be socially connected or play sports was in the hands of a small number of people who most likely people didn't even know who they were voting for. Like if you ask yeah. anyone, people did not know school board positions. So my heart had been stirring for a while with that, getting super active. But really, when the elections came out this this time, I had four people from four different areas reach out to me and just say, hey, have you considered? And I'd kind of considered about a year ago. So I prayed about it, asked some of my prayer ladies to pray with me because it's never been on my agenda. I want to be an active mom and involved in my kid's life, but I do not, I'm political is just not what I want to be. After the Lord's conversation with me, <laughs> it was really clear that I was supposed to. So here came my yes. And then I asked Rachel if she wanted to join me on this <laughs> adventure. <laughs> and yeah, and there you go. All right. So then let's go to Rachel yes. and tell us how you got 
Did you see yourself running or was it when no. Christine said, hey, I'm going to do this. You want to do it with me? Totally. I mean, like, Christine is crazy. <laughs> Christine is straight prey. Like, she's that sign lady making signs about everything. Like, let our kids play sports. or And she was just such an inspiration to me. And she always has been with civic engagement. And so I watched her and I'm like, man, she's fiery. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, for her. Yeah, you <laughs> you go, girl. You, you girl. girl. Yeah. <laughs> so, so for me, my calling, my mom has been telling me since I was a little girl, Rachel, you're called to leadership. To whom much is given, much is required. Rachel, you're called to leadership. It's mm-hmm. that voice of the mother saying, baby, I see this in you. So as I've grown up, I've I, she always called me to higher education. That was a massive priority in my family. So I have a bachelor's degree in engineering, agricultural and bioresource engineering. And in about 2018, I decided I wanted to get a master's degree in government because I was like inundated with school stuff. But my brain was hungry, like for intellectual conversation with like adults who were like smart. (laughs) But I was fascinated with our nation. I was fascinated with our government. I'm an army brat. My dad, I, I lived my life in service of our country. So I have a love for our country. I got my graduate degree in national security is government and national security. Wow. And so and that was all during the COVID. Lord set up. It was. Yeah. Totally yeah. yeah no set kidding. Up. I got it from Regent University and they teach from a Christian worldview. And a majority of my classes were on the foundations of our nation and the basically the gift that God has given. I mean, I think America is a gift. I mean, I'm not trying to be like, well, well, but I really. No, you can be. Well, well, okay, we, like, 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 let's be clear. Like America should not exist. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, when you do the research and the history, it, logistically, it does not make sense that yes. we won the American Revolution. Absolutely. And the amount of letters and historical documents that document George Washington and so many of the leaders praying yes. and going, God, this is in your hands. And and how God intervened yes. in certain battles, like it should not exist. If you haven't done. It's a miracle. Message me. I'll give you some resources. <laughs> yes. And they call so, it yeah. the American experiment, but I call it the American miracle because this oh, nation yeah. is a sign and wonder. And so I fell in love with our nation all over again. And then that my mom's voice came up again. And even her real voice. So what are you going to do with your degree? (laughs) What are you going to do with your degree? And obviously I graduated in 2020, 2021 and that time period and, you know, what our nation was going through. And my kids were coming home from public school telling me what they're learning. And I was like, oh, my God, we went over this in school. These are ideologies that are dangerous and they are a national security threat. And they're right at my doorstep. And so I thought, you know what? If you're going to run, Christine, I'm going to run. And I asked, baby. (laughs) And I asked my husband, this is my final test of all crazy ideas with my girlfriends. (laughs) Husband, you know, well, I say, can I do this? And he said, all the way, babe, you're called to it. And that's all I needed. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I did it. That's awesome. That is amazing. Way to go, Christine. Way to just ask. Way to just ask. Yeah. Such a simple question, but it could lead to so much. Absolutely. All right, Trisha, how did you see yourself running? Did you, I mean, did you ever run for class president? Did we, (laughs) I mean, was this like, okay, start. Maybe in high school, I think it was like student Stuco. Yeah. That, yeah. That right. Type of thing. Yeah. Never in a million years did I grow up saying I want to be a member of a school board. I will say, however, my mother has served on the school that I went to. She has served for 30 years wow. on wow. the school board, 10 consecutive elections. They have three years election cycle. So I grew up with hearing all about school board stuff, all about. And it was so time consuming for her. So I knew how much work that she put into it and how much she spent with our community. It was very important to her. Education is incredibly important to her. And so I grew up with that as a foundation. Never would I have dreamt of running for our local school board. But I will say in about 2017, 2018 timeframe, like everybody says here, we moved here for Blue Valley Schools. Mm. It was the promise of sending your kid to a private education without the private 
tuition. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we moved to Blue Valley. But I, and that was 2008. And about t- 2017, 2018 is when I started feeling something's just not right. It's something's wrong. And I couldn't put my finger on it. But I was, I just put my head in the sand like an ostrich. And I just said, oh my gosh, I, we live in Blue Valley. Nothing can be wrong. We live in Blue Valley. Yeah, it's not in my best. backyard. Not, no, no, not here. No, no. everything's great yep. here. Mm-hmm. And so 2020, I always say God gave us 2020 vision in 2020. Mm-hmm. We were able to pull back the curtains and see, you know what? Something is not right here. And he gave us a, a window, a picture of what was actually going on in our public schools I want to say this, for the most part, our elementary experience was amazing. We had amazing teachers all throughout elementary. I feel like teaching is a calling. It's kind of like being a pastor. No one goes into that saying, I'm going to make big bucks doing this. Right, yes. It's a calling on their life. They have a desire to teach our youth. They love kids. And that's what I love about teachers because it is their calling. It's what they're called to do. It was two years ago, 2021, uh, whenever I started praying about, Lord, I feel a stirring in my heart. I know you're calling me to do something. I don't know what it is, but I know it's something. And so I just started praying, what is that? And by the way, not the school board. I'm not interested <laughs> yeah. in the school board. I just <laughs> yeah. think yeah. Any, yes. anything but <laughs> the school board is yes. <laughs> marking this off the list, God. All That's right. right. So we're on the same page. Just I telling just you. wanted him to be on my plan. And I wanted to let him know up front it was not the school board. <laughs> so continue on. March 15th of this year, I journaled and I, I truly, there was such a strong feeling in my spirit. I can't even describe it. It was just, it was almost a burden. Like, I know you're doing something. I don't know what it is. Lord, okay, fine. If it is the school board, you it has to be written in neon. Like, I need that for confirmation. It was two weeks to the day my boss knocks on my door and he was speaking to someone and said, I have the perfect Blue Valley school board candidate sitting right in front of me. <gasps> so, I just got goosebumps. Oh, I did too. <laughs> so... All right, so, so I'm was, asking God for neon signs yeah. now. All right, that's I, I need. Or I usually ask for a two by four to hit me in the head with it, but a neon sign sounds a lot nicer, <laughs> less painful. Yeah, less painful. Yeah. yeah. So there you have it. I said yes, and he asked me what would be the one thing that would hold you back, and truly, the only thing that I said would be the financing because we were all told how much it cost, and I thought to myself, Are you kidding me to run? for a school board position, like where in the world are we going to get those resources? And he said, don't let that hold you back. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, if that's the only thing that would hold us back, we have to trust. I mean, our faith is dead if we don't believe that the Lord is in control of all of it. So I said, yes. and, And here I am. That's incredible. I love just the different ways. Isn't God so cool that he just, I mean, you guys are all such different personalities and different stages of life and come from different backgrounds. And God just hand selected each of you and said, no, no, I've had this all along and I have got you here. So how did he bring you all together and you become Blue Valley Excellence? The journey was kind of totally organic. It was like we put our names in the hat. So if you ever want to run, yeah. <laughs> Joko election office, we all have to go and sign up and put our, our name in the hat. And honestly, I just found them because it was like, look, there's other names in the hat. I mean, obviously there are the incumbents, but slowly but surely I started to meet them. And then I forget who texted who first, but we started getting each other's contact information. And it was actually just by Hey, my friend knows such and so. And I started getting text, a message from Mike. I'm running. Love to talk to you. And I'm like, yeah, me too. (laughs) You're as scared as I am. And and what are we doing? (laughs) You know, whatever. But it felt like a real natural. uh, It was like one or two week period of finding each other through connections. There's been a move in the last couple of years for school boards, especially for more of the slate type perspective, right? Where you have multiple people run together. Mm -hmm. And it's worked out phenomenally for us because we are all aligned and we're all very God-based and and have differing personalities, but we get along really well, right? So it makes it a lot more resource, to the finance point, makes it a lot more resource reasonable to have four people run together. And candidly, if you get one or two people on the board and replace, 
you can't really do a lot with those votes, right? So getting some of that additional oomph really helps a lot. And and it helps us refine our message, right? Because we each have our strengths and, and our things that we're probably less strong on, but we can kind of banter about it and say, hey, how do we approach this? How do we approach that? Right. And and I'll have a thought or Trisha will have a thought or Christina will have a thought or Rachel. And we'll all have different thoughts that we can kind of be like, oh, yeah, that's that's exactly it. And I'm going to steal what Christine says. And <laughs> Right. Yeah. She definitely does, <laughs> yeah. She definitely doesn't get mad at me about that. But things like that have been really how and to Rachel's point, it was really organic. But it also like has been very, very, very helpful for all of us. Okay, so let me ask this. I mean, you all must be very bored and have (laughs) nothing to do and your children just get to their activities on their own or are out of the house. Like, I mean, y'all's plates are full. Why now? Why are you running for school board now versus like when a little when the kids get a little bit more independent or can get drive themselves to places because i mean there were some middle school and elementary ages mentioned here and yeah. that's tough i watched tracy do it on a weekly yeah. basis and not ready for it i would say it's not mm-hmm. because it's a convenient time for any of us but i think maybe if the listeners are hearing in the story it's really a god ordained time even our connection with each other and bringing us together but i feel like if we don't draw a line in the stand somewhere and if I wait for a convenient time, it's almost like if you've ever had that advice given to you, like, I'm going to wait until I'm ready to be a parent to get pregnant. Right. Well, you're never going to have kids because Mm -hmm. no one's ever really ready to be a parent. And so for me personally, that's kind of what I felt like. It's actually a super inconvenient time to do this. I know that's true probably of most of us. There's been a couple of you and uh, that I've gotten to talk to, but you have some major life changes and yep. happenings going on. I'm going to speak to Rachel on that one. Yeah. Okay, so you're from, Ho- you're from Hawaii mm-hmm. and you happen to be in Maui when all of that happened. During the fires, the wildfires, we, we went home with our whole family for my niece's wedding. And three days after the wedding, the fires broke out in Lahaina. And so my mom is originally from Maui. All my Hawaiian family is on Maui. And my dad actually is from Maui as well. So it ripped through that side of the island and it absolutely decimated the community. I remember we went to church the Wednesday after the fires. And first of all, the church was full. Like, I mean, it's about a 3000 seater sanctuary and it was packed. And it was with people who couldn't find their family members Mm. because the cell towers in Lahaina had gone down. So there was no communication. So we were looking for auntie so-and-so and and uncle so-and-so, especially the elderly. And so, I mean, we were trying to worship, but just tears falling down everyone's face. And I can tell you that the Lord's presence in the church, in the body of Christ was overwhelming Right after service, they emptied the pews out of the church and built beds in every room of the house with the pews and started making three hot meals a day. The church is open almost 24-7 now, still housing displaced people. The church has built 300 temporary living places for families who are displaced. And in Hawaii, in Maui, a lot of our people... The locals, they serve the tourist industry. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is in Lahaina. And so in one day, families lost all of their things. They lost their jobs. They lost their livelihoods. They lost access to their side of the island. So it was intense. Yeah. And I was supposed to be back here knocking on doors. And I was like, babe, I don't know. if." And he, we just got to trust that the Lord's going to ordain and make a way for me to get to the doors and do all the things for campaigning. Because we were stuck in Maui, they canceled our flight out. And so we were stuck an extra week with family and just being there for them. So yeah, Yeah. but the response from people in the mainland has been overwhelming as far as love and support. So thanks even for asking. Any other big major life? I, I mean, Christine, you and I have been messaging back and forth and I know you are so busy with and we're talking because the print shop and we're talking job here and, yeah. and and community there and I'm doing this and then you're coordinating this for your children and I've got this and I mean you have been like you said just 
super inconvenient time to all of a sudden yeah. now be trying to, oh, and now I'm going to go home and instead of sitting down and, and putting my feet up and having a glass, an adult beverage or two, I'm, I'm going to go walk the neighborhood right. and introduce myself to hundreds of strangers. Yeah. Yeah. I would say inconvenient. I mean, I have a senior this year. My oldest graduated uh, in 22. So we just took him off. He's going for six months of missions training. So we just took him off this year. I mean, this last week, sorry, this last month or two has felt kind like of a like year. a year. <laughs> and then, of course, I have a kindergartner. So we had been amping up this last six months to really kick my business into full swing where I'm going to kind of give my days to this. And then I said yes to the school board. So inconvenient, but I will say, I think we've all kind of had this conversation together. I know Rachel and I have had it a few times as we encourage each other to keep going is like, our kids are watching this. Yeah. And my kids are seeing that when there's a problem or there's an issue that if I can do something about it, I should. And that's kind of where I'm standing even sometimes when like I'm crying at night that I don't want to get up at 5 a.m. and then go do the things and whatever. That's where I'm standing is this is not an easy time to have five kids like my youngest is a kindergartner. I'm mystery reader on Friday. Then I'm going to homecoming parade Friday afternoon and I'm installing a countertop with my guys. And then we're knocking doors and we were plant Mike, Rachel and I, Trisha, unfortunately couldn't make it. But Mike, Rachel and I were out on the town, guys, after homecoming <laughs> Friday night from midnight to 4 a.m. planting signs in the street. I felt like I should have been toilet paper Sammy's house. Like, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. of but so inconvenient, but in the midst of maybe where I'm not cooking dinners and maybe I'm sliding into home plate and missing a little bit of the first quarter of a game, my kids are actually still seeing, hey, this matters. And I think on the other side of this, they're going to see it actually impacts. If the four of us get on the board, we really believe Blue Valley could take such a turn and we think it will it will have ripple effects into the other school districts into, into the county. And and I want my kids to witness it. So absolutely. Yeah. If you're yeah. doing the work, you want your kids to be on <laughs> yeah. the receiving end. Right. It's not for the later. And I think that probably answers your question of like, why now? Why in this season? Because yeah. you want your fruit to be seen amongst your children yep. in, in the community. Yep. Hey, housewives, we are so excited. Oh my goodness, this is a dream come true. Y'all have heard us talk about our sauna sessions from the beginning, and we have Sun Lighten as a sponsor of Unlikely Housewives. Why wouldn't we have a sauna session that brings all of the good juices flowing right out of our bodies when we're detoxing. Ex Bring it right to the unlikely housewives. Exactly. But first of all, some of those benefits. The intention of getting in the sauna for us was not to create a podcast. No. no. no mm -mm, I have another we just job. wanted to sweat. We Detox. Detox. We wanted to boost our immunity. We wanted the reducing of inflammation and some the weight puff. loss. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's anti-aging. I mean, there's so many benefits to infrared sauna sessions. And so that was our initial purpose. Yeah. And just to vent, it was that season of life that we just needed to sit and talk and talk about what was going on. And that's where it all happened was in the sauna. Did you realize that there are studies that show heat therapy produces endorphins, those feel good emotions? So we were boosting our mood and ideas. So far, we boosted so far that a podcast idea came just flowing out. You guys... This is an incredible opportunity for you. You can have up to $600 off using our link, which is get.sunlighten.com backslash unlikely. That's get.sunlighten.com backslash unlikely. We'll put that link in the show notes for you too. But $600 off a Sunlighten purchase the one that I have got is the Impulse 3-in-1 Believe, and it's amazing, y'all. It has been the best health investment for our family. I'll say my friends because I invite them yeah. over. That's how I use the saunas in your... I, I know. Sweat. If I come you, over and sweat. But it's so good and such a benefit. And, and you so, said family investment. The kids can get in it, too. Exactly. 
the second I hear that there is a stomach bug going around class, get in the sunlight and girls, like you're going to do this in 20 minutes. Let's make sure your immune system is up to par to not bring that home for anybody. It is a family investment and you will not regret it. Again, that link for us is get.sunlighten.com backslash unlikely. All the link will be in the show notes. Okay, so I'm going to ask another question that wasn't actually on the list. Hope that's okay. Yeah. But I mean, we obviously am so thankful that you guys have introduced yourself and brought your personalities and your energy and just your faith to the table here and and have told our housewives how you got here. I know there's a lot of topics as to what you're fighting for. And I think from a grand scheme of things, it's in the media and it's everywhere what's going on in the schools. But what is it that you guys are standing on and fighting for currently in Blue Valley? I'll direct this. I'm going to say I'm going to each have you pick one topic yep. and just say one thing each. And that way we get to hear from all of you. So pick the four main points yep. that you're fighting for in Blue Valley. And Rachel, let's start with you. OK, first, mine would be CRT. So I will tell you this. After knocking on almost 1700 doors, a lot of people, their one question is, where do you stand on CRT? CRT the, is critical race theory. Critical race theory, which it's complicated, but it divides white and any other colored people. And it, it goes, I'm not going to do a podcast on CRT, but <laughs> the way that it it came into our household. So my, my children are half Samoan and then a Portuguese Hawaiian because I'm Portuguese Hawaiian. So I was raised in a very multicultural family, multicultural settings. Obviously, we have multicultural children. My children's skin is brown. So in Blue Valley... A name like Fa'angutu and all my kids have Polynesian names. They kind of stick out. Well, we were they were in private Christian school all their life until we moved to Blue Valley for the amazing Blue Valley school system, which it is amazing, except their first year they started coming home and talking about how they're brown and they're victims and poor us. And is that a function of social media? Maybe is it a function of who's people are teaching things to them in school? I asked my kids and my kids said, yeah, that's what the such and so teacher said. And and I said, well, that so I said, no, that's not true. You're not a victim. You're not a victim. And white people are not oppressors. It's this fun thing of, oh, us poor brown people. And I got pissed because I've actually dealt with racism in, in Hawaii. At times, it's not cool to have white skin because of things in the past. Yes. So for the podcasters who can't see you, tell them what color your skin color I'm is, white. Rachel. She, but when I'm nervous, I turn red. <laughs> <laughs> I get a little blotchy too when I'm nervous. It's fine. That's why we haven't done video until this season. I yeah. get more comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> I just have to breathe. <laughs> but I'm the only one in my family who turned out like this. And so I've been on <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one with light hair and light eyes. And I've been a white amongst all browns my whole life. And it was hard. There were tensions. Okay, for history's sake, whatever. So now we're over here in Blue Valley and my kids are telling me why they're such victims. I'm like, oh my God, your life is so posh. Like we are yeah. in Blue Valley. And, for, and second of all, the people here in Blue Valley are so open to other cultures and other peoples and other expressions. I mean, we couldn't have gone to a more open place. So you're telling me that these white people are oppressing you, but I look just like them. And finally, I put my foot down. We were, I remember at dinner and I just went off. I was like, I got it. <laughs> Stop talking about this. This is not true. You want to talk about history? Let's talk about history. But we, we can't let what happened in the past dictate how you're going to perform in the future. I put you in Blue Valley. You need to go. You need to do your homework. Where is your homework? <laughs> your grades, you know, uh -huh. like, yeah. and you need to achieve. Let's just get down to it. What are your grades at? And let's talk about where you're going in the future. And I don't want you using racial or cultural excuses of why you can't perform. And that is why I'm running. And so that's my issue. Well said. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
right. Bring it. Mm. <laughs> Sorry you have to follow that, Trisha. Yeah. Yeah. I know. But well, you got one. When you, yeah. So Mike's going to have to pick the last uh-huh. topic. So the type of one you don't get, Mike's going to... Yeah, okay. I can say one more thing on that really fast. It keeps brown people in bondage. I don't like it because I'm trying to convince you and I, we've tried to make a an example of like in America, if you work hard, you actually can be. You actually can be anything pretty much you want to be. It's a sneaky ideology because it divides people, different colors. And if you talk to internationals, they don't think like that because no. they came to America for the American dream. Yes. It only works on certain people in the United States. And anyways, Blue Valley is about excellence. So everybody go be excellent. OK. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, I am the only non-biracial family <laughs> in this group. <laughs> However, I must say my children for the longest time, our firstborn and our thirdborn, so well, our youngest, never thought their daddy was white. They always thought he was either black or Hispanic. <laughs> they said that. They asked him, flat out ask him that because he's dark complected. And when he in, he's in the sun, he is super, super, super dark. But mama is white. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, there are so many reasons. Oh, my gosh. There's so many reasons that I ran. But one of the things that I have noticed very recently and talking with a lot of our teachers. So that's that's just it. We've been in Blue Valley since 2008. I think we're the longest. Are we the longest? 2008? Okay. So we've been with a lot of teachers and we've talked to a lot of teachers over the years. And I would say even within the last four years specifically, a lot of issues are coming up with behavior, the behavior in the classrooms and speaking about undisciplined almost as if my children have witnessed other students telling their teachers to F off. That is absolutely unacceptable. And for there not to be a punishment that deters that type of behavior, that is not okay because it's going to continue to happen. And those types of teachers are running there. What do you do with that? They didn't learn that. They didn't go to school to learn how to teach kids who bark at them or I was going to say to be Mm -hmm. verbally abused or that's exactly right by their students and then only to have those students removed from the class to return to the class 10 15 minutes later as if it didn't happen it's not okay I've had countless conversations with teachers that say I don't know what else to do. I'm within five years of retirement. I don't know if I can continue. We had one teacher that almost quit last year and and is within five years of retirement and for whatever reason decided to stay in, right? That's the golden handcuffs that you're so close to retirement. And then we have teachers that are saying, I don't know what else to do. I've been teaching for however many years. So it's not like I can just go out and get another job. Yes, it's an employee's market but not necessarily for their skill set. So they can't Mm -hmm. just leave what they're doing and go and have a replacement income. So I feel like we have to have some kind of progressive discipline where if you do this, this happens. And it's for every single child, not just some. It Mm -hmm. has to be across the board. Everyone does better under discipline. We all do it. Yep. You have a routine. You have to know what to expect. Every single day as adults, we have certain things. We can't just go out and... It's wh- learning a respect for authority and is not taught anymore. They question authority, don't respect... Like you can say whatever. People trying to make it bad of like, respect your elders. Well, not all elders are have the best interest. Well, yep. yeah, no kidding. Like there are... There's discernment in it. Right. But there is no respect for authority and a position... And and that is not something that is taught at home anymore. I was just going to say, yep. it starts at home. We have this conversation yep. just recently. And in our house, we say respect the no. We are not debating about, no, you just respect the no. no. And I think that is like, again, kids in classrooms and teachers, they are told to do something. And then it's a conversation. It's a let me debate it. Let's discuss it. There's no discussion. Like that's where there's so much of that. It's it's got to come down. And I totally agree. There's got to be some like 
systems in place yeah. that everybody follows. Well, there's the lack of, like you said, there's the lack of respect anymore for the position. Mm-hmm. Teachers, like I said, is a calling. Yeah. It's what they feel called to do. So bringing back how important our teachers are and we have to learn to listen, not all we're not going to agree on everything. It's OK to not agree, but you have to be respectful. We have to get our culture back to everybody can sit at the table. You have to be able to come sit at the table and have a conversation without screaming, without blurting, Mm -hmm. without name calling. There has to be some type of an adult and a child relationship that is a respective level. Discipline is a huge priority for me, not because I'm a heavy hand, I just feel like our kids do better under a disciplined environment. Well, that's what the world, you can't say F off to your boss and expect to be able to show up tomorrow and get your paycheck. I guess you could. I mean, you could, (laughs) but that'll be the last time they're your boss. (laughs) That's right. So just as an aside, we do refer to Trisha as the church lady of the group. So she <laughs> definitely be uh, the one that does not say that. Oh, that's okay. All right. That's good. Church lady. Yeah. All right. How about and, you, Christine? Well, I did want to just say for Trisha's point, the reason why it's important is because If teachers are spending too much time disciplining, then there's no time for education. And then we're also, like Trisha said, we're losing the good teachers. That's right. Yes, parents, there are not all good teachers out there. And we're seeing that there aren't. That's right. Or at least maybe good not isn't the right word. But you know what I mean? Like you may not choose all these teachers to teach your kids, but the ones who are good are deciding to not come back. They are quitting. In Blue Valley, we had the highest retirement stats in like five years in 2020. And yes, it was a teensy bit COVID, but it's because there was all these additional things that these teachers are having to put up with. So the reason why classroom environment is important is because we want the good teachers to stay and feel supported. So it kind of tags into why one of the main reasons why I'm running, but I wanted to say that about Trisha. And if someone's like, wait, why discipline? It's because we're trying to create an environment where your kid can learn and then where the teachers can actually teach and want to come back let to me, school let tomorrow. Me, let me add one more thing to that. So my daughter, who's a senior in high school this year, okay, she wanted from the time she was little, I remember she wanted to be a teacher. That's what she wanted to do. And it changed. It changed from her freshman year. She said, absolutely not. There is no way I would ever do that. You should see the way some of the kids behave, the way they speak to the teachers, the way they treat one another. They just have, there's just no, and and it's not all kids. You know, I want to make sure I'm very clear on that. There are a lot of good kids in Blue Valley. There are a lot of amazing families and we're meeting a lot of them as we're knocking on the doors. It's parents. It's, yeah. And it's administrators that are trying to keep the peace. Like, I don't want to ruffle the feathers. I don't need the parents in my office emailing me every single day. But there are a lot of parents that, need to let their children like have consequences. That's right. Yeah. So that's exactly right. All right, Christine, give us a topic. I would say my biggest kind of poke. So like Tracy mentioned, I've been or and Rachel, too. I've been pretty active. Tracy and I've been praying a couple of times just about what's going on in the schools. But my poke was realizing that during COVID, when all this stuff went down, is that the voices of parents weren't being heard. Like, that's what I was experiencing, is that the parents around me were asking for certain things from the school board and even the county commissioners. And it was like they would listen to you or they would at least let you speak. But then they just had already made their decision and they were doing what they wanted. And so for me, I believe parents are their kids' first and best advocate. And I think that a big wedge between parents and teachers was created in that season. I truthfully feel like it was a plan of the enemy. So uh, I feel like he has all these horrible ideologies and stuff that are creating division, even between that relationship. So my poke was, I need to then step up and do something. If I feel like I'm not being represented and I'm hearing all these parents feeling like they're not welcome in the classroom. I'm hearing teachers say they're afraid of being sued by parents. There's just all these things. That's the two best partnerships. Like Trisha said, the teachers are doing it for a calling. My mother-in-law was a preschool teacher for 30 years. She did not get paid enough. I had to cut out alphabet letters with her after my dates with my husband because she didn't have enough time in the day. So teachers are always working hard. 
I feel like that relationship being restored where the parents who are their kids first and best advocate can come alongside teachers, can have their voices be heard is something that I'm super passionate about. I feel like it's really the only way to ensure that our kids get the best education and that some of these things that are in our classrooms that are hindrances can be removed. Well, and I want to Two things can be true at the same time, because we literally just said there are parents that are not letting their children have consequences and there are parents that want to have a relationship with their teacher and know what's going on. Yep. Two things can be true at one. We believe in the and. Yeah. And we know that there is a balance. There is a time where the teacher has the final word. Grades. Yep. And then there are when the parents have the final words. I don't know biology and (laughs) a couple other things that are in there. Yeah. But like there's a healthy balance and we're losing it because people think it's all or nothing. That's right. And I think anyone of any parent of multiple children would tell you, I mean, like I have five kids. My oldest are the oldest four are boys. And, you know, my 19 year old and my 17 year old, when they were in their teens, we talked about different topics at different times, we got to address and decide. And I, that's true for my 13-year-old who we've talked about things with. And his conversations aren't, they're not completely kid-led, but you get to decide and discern what's going on with your kids. And so I think that most amazing teachers are looking for that parent partnership because we do have those factors that they don't get to see. And so I'm passionate. And And I believe in small government, like representative government. So if we get elected, Mm -hmm. we're supposed to represent as best we can what the parents want. Didn't feel like that was happening. So now I'm looking to be a representative. (laughs) There you go. I love it. All right, Mike, finish us up. Are we talking about buses? Because that was no. (laughs) (laughs) You already got that topic in there. So now that we've spent a solid chunk of time on all the fun stuff, we're going (laughs) to. Let's hand the mic to Mike. So I guess my passion is not surprisingly, the finances, right, of the schools. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think it ties into all of this. And I think all of us feel this way, right, too. I think there's a lot of waste in our schools. And money is a way that we communicate value, right? And, and so we are right now communicating value to things that do not add to our students' lives, right, that do not enrich their lives. We are spending more money on SEL or CRT or DEI or different things like that that do not add to our kids' lives. They don't add to what our kids are going to bring to their communities as adults. They don't add to any of that. And so we are spending money on that rather than devoting money to helping teachers, helping reduce class size to help behavior issues, different things like that. So we are, we are misallocating our resources and misallocating our value, right? That we see in our schools. And what we've seen is, is again, a finance guy. My company was a publicly traded company for eight years. So dealt with a lot of investor relations stuff. The market right now, which is Blue Valley, is not seeing the value in our schools. And so we've seen a flat to slight raise in enrollment while our population has grown 10% over the last 10 years. So the market is saying, hey, your stock price is plummeting because we're not seeing the value here. We are frustrated with how you are spending the money. And yeah, it's still really good because, again, Blue Valley is the richest place in Kansas for, for all intents and purposes as far as school systems go. I'll just say this. We went to the Blue Valley Community Breakfast. Yes. And the total that they said was raised after that one breakfast for that one event was jaw dropping. Right. Because we all pay Blue Valley taxes. And I was like, I'm sorry, you want what? (laughs) For what? (laughs) I mean, that makes so much sense. Like, We are being wasteful Mm -hmm. with what they have been given and not being good stewards, going back to being good stewards. Yes. And so you're seeing, I mean, my half Korean kids being told they're racist with this money, if you will. (laughs) (laughs) Or we're seeing our classrooms, behavioral issues uh, break down. And we've seen that a lot in our elementary, especially that that my kids go to. Mm -hmm. Or we are just seeing parents being told. Good story. We're going to go ahead and ignore you when they try to get involved, right? Oh. And all of this is what we are doing with your money is just, hey, we we know what's best. Yeah. I, I can go on a Woodrow Wilson 
progressives chant. Get us going on that. The team go, knows my what my kids call my dad dad rants that I occasionally <laughs> go on very, about various subjects, including history. But anyways, we are just not seeing that value and, and people are frustrated and we especially are frustrated. And that's kind of where my passion especially lies. So one of the things that I am very concerned with is the lack of academic rigor in our schools, in public school in general, but specifically in Blue Valley. Blue Valley has always been known for being at the top. We are the best. Okay, great. What does that mean? What is the best? 50% is the best? I don't think so. We have a 97.5% graduation rate. 97.5% of our students are graduating. 42.4% are college ready. That's unacceptable. That math doesn't even add up. That's not even common core math. That doesn't work. You cannot tell me 42.4% of our kids are not even ready for college. It's not okay. We cannot settle for mediocrity. That is not where we are. We can't be at the top of our game and say, oh, Blue Valley's number one in the nation. For what? Being average? I don't know about you, but I don't want my children to settle for average. It's not okay. We are called to be leaders and in our communities. We want our kids to excel and we cannot settle for anything less than the best. And 50% is not okay. So one of the things that we've noticed in public school at Blue Valley is retakes. A lot of the, the high schoolers can retake tests one, two, three, four times. So then is a grade really a grade? Because did you really learn? So that is something that is not very helpful. And then as far as excellence and preparation at the doors, this is what I've heard. In the past, it was so rigorous. Blue Valley, and I think the reputation for Blue Valley is much bigger than the reality of what it's putting out over the last, I would say, since 2015 to now, you can see a slip. If you were to track a third grader from 2015 through the school system in Blue Valley, you would see that their reading scores have gone down, their math scores have gone down. And this is on the Kansas Department of Education website. It's like all out there. But but the idea is that if you can spin the numbers enough now and keep the game going, everything is awesome. Everything is awesome. The reason why we're running right now is because if this train doesn't, if this ship doesn't turn, everything is going to be way not awesome in like five years. It's not even like 10 years because we're already seeing the lack of rigor and the poor performance in test scores. And I will say this, a lot of people, especially our Indian community, our Asian community, they come here because they want their children to be American doctors, American professionals. They're, they're going for those super high degrees, which Blue Valley has done well in the past. But if we stay on this course, those super awesome things will slip, 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 and we'll be into mediocrity like how she was saying. And so do you guys have anything else you want to add to that? Blue Valley prides itself on being leaders of Kansas education in a lot of ways. Um, and right now, everyone will point to, well, can Blue Valley is at the top or near the top of a lot of metrics. But the problem is, is we're leading the rest of Kansas down. And, and there are schools that are turning this tide ahead of us, and we need to turn the tide and lead Kansas back out of some of this rut we've seen academically. Yeah, I would just say as a business owner, even Mike and Trisha, as they're evaluating, like anytime something's not working, you evaluate and you reassess and you change. And unfortunately, we've not been, not we us four, but the school district has not been evaluating what's going wrong and looking to continue to improve. It's like they're doing the Lego song, like Rachel just saying, everything is awesome. And it's continuing a downward spiral. And we're spending millions of dollars on other things that have nothing to do with improving the academic rigor or the support system or the curriculum. And so we're passionate about it because we want to protect our kids, but we want our kids to get an excellent education in Blue Valley and we want to see them soar when they take off. Yeah. Thank you for shedding light on that, because as a parent of a high schooler and two middle schoolers, I could rant right now <laughs> about my children not knowing how to study. Right. Not studying because they know they can retake it. 
Right. There are so many things, you guys, that I will say off air. But I do appreciate that you guys have brought that to attention. In, and I do think I will say from a parent standpoint, the change in the high school is better than it was last year. Mm. So yeah. progress. OK, okay. I'm going to just say two things. First of all, we need to just give credit where credit is due. So Tori's kids do not go to public school. And Tori grabbed my hand and was like, let's go, honey. We need to do things for the public school. (laughs) So that is I joke about that. But literally, I wouldn't have done anything if it wasn't for Tori, because I was still in that season three years ago of like just being quiet and keeping the peace. But it just takes one person Mm -hmm. to say, let's go do this. Let's stand up for this. And our biggest message in this right here and having you guys at the table is we need people to vote for you all. Like you guys have such great vision, such great purpose, and God has aligned you. But unless we get this community right. putting your four names on that ballot, That's right. the change won't happen. That's right. And this is where we are calling our listeners to action, not just showing up on election day. OK, I know it's hard. I know it's inconvenient. You're trying to get I didn't make it in for early voting and now I got to go stand in line on the, all, the day or whatever, whatever excuse that we can the enemy can give us. To put it off and say, ah, my vote doesn't matter. One, it does. It does. Every Amen. single vote yeah, matters. Right. And don't let anybody tell you right. al- otherwise. Exactly. I am watching. I lived in Collin County in Texas, and I am watching that county turn purple because of people going, well, my vote doesn't matter. So, yes, it does. Then the other thing is, too, is maybe a listener is listening and going, Okay, this sounds great. I'm not going to run for school board. And good, because you can't right now. Um, (laughs) um, In Blue Valley, in Blue Valley. And and probably you're probably too late in the game to do it this year. But what is God putting on your heart that you can do? Can you share this podcast with people in your neighborhood, in your Bible study, at your church? Can you walk doors? Can you put a sign in your yard? Can you hold a meet and greet, fi- I mean, a-, a public park and just say, hey, I'll get all four people to come here. You just come and listen to them talk and you invite people like crazy. There's so many different levels of how they can help you. And if they can help financially, because things cost money. Let's be real. Like Trisha was saying, it's like you don't realize how much financial resources you have to have to run in this. I mean, and to just be able to be on the same not level because God's in control at the end of the day, but yeah. but it is you have to have a same caliber. If you're just putting the garage sale signs out and saying, vote for me, nobody's going to take you seriously. Right. So there are so many different ways you as a listener can help. Um, we are going to go through the table and I'm going to have everybody say your website, how to find you on social media. And what would be your greatest need, whether that is you want signs out there for your yard, donating to the campaign, you need people to walk doors with you, just say what your greatest need is and how they can find you and help you. Hey, Tori, can I cut in one thing too? Yes, you can. On that note, on the involvement note, my wife and I are definitely the blending in type. So I think we're less of more of the blending in type than the rest of the team. So we have spent our whole time here in Blue Valley blending in and we try to impact the lives of people we know, but you and I go to the same church and never met, right? Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> and, that's true. Uh, and we go to the same service and never met. So, and we know the same people and we and, and yeah, exactly. We have <laughs> a lot so, of same And so we have always been the type that blends in and we have been the type that haven't tried to figure out those, those ways to get involved. And we, again, we try to impact the lives of people that we know, but I would encourage your listeners and hopefully we're an example of that. There is stuff you can do. And these things we're talking about are things that you can do. And so what if somebody outs you as a conservative or whatever? (laughs) Listen to God and and see what he is calling you to do. And don't feel like I've always just blended in. It's fine. This is just how I am. And there is a time to blend in, but there is also a time to do something. And regardless of what that is, and we can talk about all that really try to seek what that is to do to not blend in. Because I think, too, when you don't blend in, you'll be surprised how many people feel the exact same way that you do. Yep. And that goes back to why we started this podcast. It does. Is because the conversations that Tracy and I were having, 
we thought we were the only ones. And then when we started talking, going, oh my gosh, I feel that way too. Oh my gosh, you you too. And while, yes, it took us to step out, but now we don't blend in. I mean, (laughs) and and it's incredible how God can use that ripple effect. And you're not alone. Like all of you did not intend to be a slate for this position. And God was like, I'm going to give you a community in this. I'm going to give you a new group. I'm going to give you a support system that is going to have your back. And that changes everything. All right, Rachel, go ahead. My website is Rachel for Blue Valley. So it's Rachel with just an E. Rachel for Blue Valley dot com. And then my email is Rachel for Blue Valley at Gmail dot com. If you want to email me about anything, you'll see my donate code on that as well. And you'll see a pretty picture of my family. Oh, <laughs> and then I would say the thing that would help me the most is if the people listening to here found 10 people, made a list of 10 friends and started talking to them, shoot them a text today about voting on November 7th and then make a plan for the morning of the 7th to all go together to vote together and maybe go have a latte or something afterwards (laughs) to celebrate your voting party. That would actually make the world of difference for me Mm -hmm. because I actually think we're going to win this thing based on People just talking. Yeah. Like, have you heard? Have you heard? There's a bunch of people just like us who are running. And I think the only action step we need is for everyone who's talking to just say, hey, let's all go together. Mm -hmm. I would love that. If you would do that for me, I'd be happy. Thank you, Rachel. We have to encourage everyone to step out in faith. We know at least one person. We all have at least one neighbor that we can step out in faith. And yes, like Mike said, We might be outed for being, and I like to call us, by the way, a common sense conservative. I feel like common sense is not common anymore. Yeah. So we have to get back to common sense and what principles are common sense, like not outrageous. Anyway, so my website is Hamilton for Blue Valley and that it's spelled out F-O-R. So Hamilton for Blue Valley dot com. My email address is Trisha Hamilton for Blue Valley at gmail.com. I would agree with Rachel on that. I would say step out in faith, ask your individuals. And I said, don't wait till November 7th. Early voting begins October 28th at Hilltop. Go cast your ballot on as early as you possibly can. If the 28th doesn't work, go to the 29th, whatever it is. Cast your ballot early, secure that so nothing comes up, but talk to everyone. When you see us coming and knocking, you've got a palm card on your door. Take a picture of it and send it to 10 friends and all, again, agree to go out and vote. And yes, we would love for you to host a yard sign if you are willing to step out and be bold and in a leadership role. Listen, we are leaders. It's not what we do. It's who we are. And so we are stepping out in faith in a leadership role, and we're asking you to do the same thing. Be the leader in your community. Put a sign in your yard that says, I stand for Blue Valley Excellent. I stand for these candidates who are for common sense, who are for what is right for our teachers, who is what is right for our students and our community. All of it. Step out in faith. Lead. Thank you, Trisha. Thank you. That's good. So I will say two things. If all of our websites get very confusing, our group website is bluevalleyexcellence.com and you can find each of our websites individually through there. And you can donate on the main page. You can donate on our individual page to our individual campaigns and you can sign up for a yard sign and all that good stuff there too. But for resources, my website is Christine Vasquez, V-A-S-Q-U-E-Z for bluevalley.com and it's spelled out like the other ones for. I would agree with the ladies that really we need to get the vote out. It's actually, you should feel super encouraged, like Tori said, that your vote matters because we're knocking on doors. And if the people we're knocking on doors that are responding that we need change actually vote, guys, I think we could win this in a landslide, but we have to get to the polls. So um, it's super important. Lots of people will say, hey, my kids have graduated. It doesn't matter. Or I met a man at the door yesterday. He's like, my wife and I decided we didn't 
we weren't going to have kids, so I don't have a horse in the race. And I was like, you, you do because they're serving you. Yeah, you pay taxes. You get to tell them where they go. But, you know, they're serving you at McDonald's. They're going to be taking care of you in a nursing home. Uh, for those of us that do have kids, they're going to college with your kids. So it matters. It's super important. Getting the vote out is high priority. And then if you've got $5, $20, $100 to spare, we totally need to do signs, mailers, texts. We're in a big push for funds and knocking. So that's a huge blessing as well. So I'll reiterate, uh, bluevalleyexcellence.com is kind of where everything starts. My website is actually mikehibner.vote. My last name is spelled H-U-E-B-N-E-R. And my email address is mike 4 valley at gmail.com. What I would say is, and one of the most encouraging things we've, I think all of us have heard at various doors, is get together with your small groups or just your, your spouse or whatever and pray for us. We've gotten a lot of folks that said, hey, our, our small group was just talking about you. And, and honestly, that's really encouraging. It's really helpful. So on top of the donating and, and all of that, one thing we, I don't think we went into too much, but we have all as Christians become uninvolved in these type of things. Right. And we, we need to be involved. And some of that is just getting together and praying about it and talking about it. And, and people don't like to have political discussions at their small group or different things like that. And I'm not saying you need to get way into some of that, but we also need to be leading our communities in a Christian way because we believe that's the right way, right? So work with your small group, pray for us. And, yeah. and uh, again, just talk about us. That's really helpful. I'm going to do a throwback if very much on what Mike says. If you have not listened to Silence, it's a matter of life and death episode. You need to listen to it because it's exactly that topic is that our churches need to get more involved in things. It's not political. It's biblical. Yes. Amen. We will put all of these links on our show notes. That way, all you have to do as a listener is scroll down and find these links and click and (laughs) go and donate. And until next time. Housewives, we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Whether we made you laugh or cry today, we pray you feel appreciated, bolder and braver than yesterday, stronger and more faithful for tomorrow and living in who you were made to be today. Join our online community on Facebook. Link in the show notes. And be sure to review and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you enjoy listening. Until next time, housewives, we give you permission to walk confidently, free, and to be intentional in your slippers or stilettos.